Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Jaggi's Academy. I'm going to start with the pathophysiology that, uh, and I will discuss all the chapters of pathophysiology one by one. And these chapters they have been written in my book Pathophysiology, uh, which is published by Valu Prakashan and I will uh, teach my chapters from this book. So starting from the pathophysiology, I will discuss about the homeostasis and the feedback system. So first of all, go to the definitions. So what do we mean by the term physiology? So when we say physiology, we mean when we discuss the normal functions of the healthy person. Let's say we are discussing the uh, heart functions of the heart, what are the functions of the respiratory system, what are the urinary system. When we discuss all these things in the normal uh, healthy persons, we discuss, we, we are studying the pathophysiology, we are discussing the physiology. But when we talk about this word pathology, pathology means patho means suffering and logy means study. So that means when we study the diseases and what is the cause, what is the origin, what is the nature of the disease, that means we are studying the pathology. So what we do in the pathology? So what we do is that we take out the body fluid, we take out the tissues or the organs in the form of autopsies, we study that one and we diagnose what kind of the disease is taking place. So that is a typical pathology. But the topic that we are going to study is not physiology, it is not pathology, rather it is our pathophysiology. So obviously as you can see, it is a conversion of two terms, pathology and physiology. So what is the thing in the pathophysiology? It deals with the functional changes taking place in the diseased organs. So that means if there is a disease, so what kind of changes are taking place in that person that we discuss in the pathophysiology. So that means the major focus is on the what are the mechanisms which are involved in the development of pathophysiology. That, what are the mechanisms involved in the development of the disease that is the core feature of the pathophysiology which is very different from the pathology in which the focus is only on the disease not on the mechanism. So we will discuss about the pathophysiology. Pathophysiology is a relatively new field. We study pathophysiology because ultimately we have to go for the drug therapy. So first of all I will go for the term homeostasis. Homeo mean, uh, homeostasis mean a state of our equilibrium. Uh, so it is the uh, important feature of all the organisms that they maintain the uh, body uh, system in the equilibrium whatever the changes are taking place outside the body. Let's see. Uh, body temperature of a human being is at 37 degree. Whether it is living in the winters, whether it is living in the summer, whatever the temperature outside the body is, but body maintains the temperature to 37 degree. See? Similarly, whatever the things we are eating, whatever the things we are doing with, with our, ourselves, but in a normal human being, pH will always remain at 7.4. Similarly, blood pressure remains at the level of 120 and 80. So when these kind of the things are maintained in the body, uh, that means we are in a state of a homeostasis. So what will happen if this homeostasis is disturbed? Then we are having the diseases or the disorder. So we can say disturbance of the homeostasis is responsible for the development of diseases or disorder. Like, like, like I told previously, the temperature is at 37 degrees C. But what if the temperature is not at the 37 degrees C? It is at a higher temperature. We will say the person is having some fever. Similarly, if the pressure rises, to one point, more than 120 or 80, we will say the person is suffering from hypertension. So now, uh, another important thing that, that I want to discuss with you is the feedback system. So what is a feedback system? Feedback system is that if I am doing some work, I need a feedback source from somebody so that I can, I can do, I can modify my action. Similarly, all the work a biological action system, biological things which are happening in my body, they are controlled by something. If I am driving a car, so I am putting my foot on an accelerator, but simultaneously I am having a foot on the brake also. So that means accelerator and the brake, they are controlling uh, the speed. So I will discuss this thing in the uh, more detailed manner. So in this condition, what I am saying is, they, if the product, that means the outcome, if enhance the process, I will say it is a positive feedback system. That means if I am driving a car, I am putting a foot on the accelerator, it is moving in a fast direction. I will say it is enhancing the process. It is a positive feedback mechanism. But if the product slows down the process, if something, so that means if I am putting a brake, uh, putting my foot on the brake, it will slow down the process. So it is a negative feedback system. So positive and negative system, they are there in the body to maintain the homeostasis. So I will discuss the examples of the feedback system. 
Uh, so I'm giving the I will use certain terms. So uh, be careful. So let's say uh, I'm eating a food. So whenever I'm eating a food, so glucose level will increase in body. So so this increase in the glucose level is a stimulus. What it will lead to? So obviously the glucose will be detected by my pancreas, particularly the beta cells of the pancreas. And this is called as a sensor. The beta cells of the pancreas, they are called, they are sensor because they are sensing the rise in glucose level. So now what, after sensing, what will happen? Now these pancreas will respond. How they will respond? By releasing the insulin. So this process is called as control. So now what insulin will lead to? Insulin will decrease the glucose level. It will utilize the glucose. So that means we are having the effect. So you can say these are the different components of the feedback system. Uh, there is a stimulus, there is a sensor, there is a control, there is a effector. So uh, I will discuss these things uh, in more detail manner in the subsequent slides. So now, I told there is a stimulus, there is a sensor, there is a control, there is a effector. Now they are controlled, one is controlling the other. Let's say if this effector is controlling the stimulus in a negative manner, that means it is effector is inhibiting the stimulus. So we say there is a negative feedback mechanism. But on the other hand, if the effector is stimulating, it is having a positive effect, if it is having the enhancement effect, we say it is a positive feedback mechanism. Now we have to remember that in our body, most of the systems are negative feedback mechanisms. And on the other hand, positive feedback mechanisms are very few. So I will discuss the examples of positive and negative feedback mechanism. First, I will discuss the example of a positive feedback mechanism. I will discuss two examples. First, so let's take the example during the childbirth. When the childbirth has to take place, there is a contraction of the uterus. There is an initiation. It is just a start of a uterine contraction. So what it will lead to? The contraction of the uterus will give stimulus to the brain and the brain will respond, particularly in the brain there is a posterior pituitary. This posterior pituitary will respond by releasing the hormone which is called as oxytocin. So this is what I have written, increase in oxytocin from the posterior pituitary. Now what is the function of oxytocin which is released? This oxytocin will lead to enhancement of the uterine contraction. So they, I have written augmentation of uterine contraction. So now what is the, how they are controlling one another? This augmentation of the uterine contraction is further enhancing the uterine or uh, enhancing the oxytocin release. So this is called as a positive feedback mechanism. And then more oxytocin, more uterine contraction, more uterine contraction, more oxytocin release. So this kind of a false positive feedback mechanism is there until there is an expulsion of the fetus from the body. That is till the childbirth is taking place. So, so this is the one of the very important example of the positive feedback mechanism in our body. So I will discuss this second example. So this is a part I am telling, this is the enhancement of both these two. So now another example of this feedback mechanism is when there is a, a stoppage of the bleeding. That means there is a platelet prof, or platelet plug formation. That means, uh, let's say there is any cut in the blood vessel. So obviously you know when there is a cut in the blood vessel, we have to stop the blood. How the blood will be stopped, how the bleeding will be controlled. Uh, there is accumulation of the platelets at the site of the cut. What platelets will lead to? Platelets will release certain chemicals. These chemicals will recruit more platelets. The platelets will come more in number, more platelets. There is enhancement. Platelets will enhance more chemicals. Chemicals will recruit platelets. They will enhance the chemicals. So this kind of positive feedback mechanism is there. Till the lot of platelets are there and they fill the gap to reduce the bleeding. So this is another example of this positive feedback mechanism. So again, I just want to remind there are very few examples of the positive feedback mechanisms. Most of the examples in our body they are of the negative feedback mechanism. So I will discussing I will discuss the example of the negative feedback mechanism. So how the blood pressure is controlled in our body? Let's say uh, my blood pressure is 120 and 80. Let's say it is going to, let's say it increases to 120, uh, 120 from 120 to 122. Let's say. So there's a slight increase in the blood pressure. How it will come down from 122 to 120? So whenever the pressure is increased, 
This pressure is detected by certain receptors in my body. These receptors they are called as baroreceptors. Baro mean pressure, receptor mean which can sense. So the pressure receptors, pressure sensing receptors are there in the carotid artery. And obviously they will detect. So once they will detect this kind of the increase in pressure, they will give signal to the brain. So that means there is interpretation by the brain. Brain, what it will do, it will decrease the sympathetic outflow. Uh, I will, I will discuss all these things in the subsequent chapter. This is the first chapter, so that is why I am uh, using certain terms. But these terms will be very clear when we we'll discuss specifically the chapter of the blood pressure. So there is a decrease in the sympathetic outflow. The sympathetic outflow, when it is reduced, it will decrease. It will produce the vasodilation. It will decrease the heart rate, and all these things they will reduce the blood pressure. They will normalize the blood pressure. So this is called as the negative feedback mechanism. Another example, uh, uh, most of the things, uh, the hormones in our, in our body, they are under the control of the negative feedback me mechanism. So I'm discussing one of the example. Let's say uh, there is a hypothalamus, which is a very important organ in our, in our brain. It control, it releases the hormone, which is called as thyroid releasing hormone. This thyroid releasing hormone acts on the anterior pituitary. This anterior pituitary responds by releasing another hormone which is called as thyroid stimulating hormone which is in short it is called as TSH. This TSH thyroid stimulating hormone acts on the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland responds by releasing the hormones they are called as T3 and T4. T3 is the triiodothyronine, T4 is the th uh, thyroxine. So now how the control mechanism is there? So whenever this T3 and T4 is released, it gives the signals, negative signals, to the anterior pituitary. Negative. It gives a negative si uh, signal to the hypothalamus. That means if T3 and T4 is increased, the levels of TSH and the levels of TRS will be reduced. Hypothalamus will be inhibited, pituitary will be inhibited so that T3 and T4 is reduced. So this is a negative feedback. Please. Again, I will say, I am putting a brake on, I am putting my foot on the brakes to slow down the speed of my car. So this is the negative feedback mechanism. So I will discuss uh, uh, more things in my upcoming video uh, like this, what are the agents which can produce the cell injury, particularly my focus will be on the ischemia and on the hypoxia.